Comics Sans Cancer. Hey gang, it's your boy. And with the recent return of Wolverine and Marvel's comic books, I feel it's a good opportunity to share my favorite issue of Marvel Comics Wolverine from 1992, State of Grace. Written by Larry Hama, whose writing I could take or leave at times, but most importantly, it's penciled and inked by one of my favorite artists, Mark Tashira. He's got a very unique style, and he also uses photo references and models to fill in some of the details, which gives his work a surreal look. I usually see a, a bit of Clint Eastwood and maybe some Kurt Russell, with a hint of Bruce Lee at times in Wolverine's face in this comic, at least when he's out of his X-Men uniform. Now, even though this is a one-shot filler issue that gives us just a peek at the impact Wolverine's relationships with Silver Fox and Jean Grey had on him, in my opinion, it puts any of the issues from the Return of Wolverine series to shame. Now, your boy Zack has uploaded videos reviewing Wolverine's big return, and I agree with his assessment of the most recent issues. Like I said, so I did, they, they spent four miniseries, no, five miniseries. So it was four Hunt for Wolverines, and there was Return of Wolverine. And I think there was a one-shot Return of Wolverine, and then there was a miniseries Wolverine. Like 20 appearances. And this is all you need. Him coming out of the water, all burned. A fishing boat sees him. Look how spare this is. Over there. Hey, please tell me you got some beer. Boom, there. That, this is all you needed. Now here's something you can't squeeze into three pages and get the same takeaway. Let's start with this cover. It's fantastic. This is a great use of white background and very telling composition. It pretty much lays out what you're getting inside. Wolverine is upset, he's conflicted, he's going through personal hell, and his fellow X-Men are concerned. It also sets a great tone for the economy of quality and detail you get on the artwork inside. This attentive rendition of Wolverine in the foreground contrasts with his low-res counterparts in the back pretty well. Tashira's page detail seems to be about an 80-20 ratio. Keep your eyes open for the odd panel out on most of the pages inside. We start off with a nice full pager as Wolverine prepares for an unusual danger room exercise. Let's do it, Chuck. Crank me up to 10 and let the microchips fall where they may. Professor X voices his concerns regarding what Logan hopes to achieve from the experience. Then Jubilee chimes in with her throwback 50s teen speak here. Golly gee whiz, Professor Xavier. I sure am sorry that Wolvie isn't a superior human being who can work out his problems internally like you. Isn't it like a crying shame that he has to resort to kicking over garbage cans and punching brick walls like the rest of us cerebrally underdeveloped homo inferiors? Then Scott initiates the program. Apparently, Professor X has created a program to help Logan deal with the death of Silver Fox. Wolverine finds Sabretooth at the scene with his toxic masculinity on full display. Silver Fox! You're too late, Logan. Sabretooth. She was an uppity little squaw, Logan. And she said no. Jean shows concern, but Scott assures her that it's all Logan approved. He provided that snippet of dialogue himself, Jean. Wolverine and Sabretooth begin beating the snot out of each other. Professor X wonders why Logan wanted to feel the pain in the danger room. The others conclude it's like punching a brick wall. You know it's going to hurt, but you do it anyway. Some hero you are. You couldn't even save the woman you love. You're worthless. Jean is shocked, but Xavier explains the unprogrammed responses Sabretooth is giving are a feature of the program, not a flaw. In this part of the fight, we see Tashira start introducing the ink spatter to satisfy and circumvent the comics code authority, and as we'll see, it gets cranked up later. Sabretooth backs Wolverine into a corner and starts feeding him his fists. And some truth bombs. You were gonna do it. They sent you out with a suitcase full of hardware to do a job of wet work on Terry Adams, and you went. No, they scrubbed the mission. They called me back. Some sweet artwork right there. Xavier shuts down the simulation, and Wolverine is left mumbling from the revelations. Wolverine goes to a seedy bar to play pool with some bikers. I probably won't end well. Heads up, buddy. It's your shot. You gonna take your shot, or you gonna keep staring off into dreamland? It's your last shot. You gotta call the pocket. And the barkeep sends one down the bar. Logan takes a drink and calls his shot. Unsurprisingly, the bikers get salty and welch on the bet. Pay up, bub. I believe you put a yard on that game when it was looking your way. I think I do believe I've been hustled. Must have took your smart pill today, huh, bub? Tell you what, how's about a game of punch for punch? Double or nothing, you go first. 
but I get to pick where the punches go. Whoever's left standing picks up the pot. Fair enough. The two lay down some ground rules and get ready to settle the bet. Where do you want it, sucker? Right cheer, bub. Dead center in the old knuckle mug. Remember, I get to punch you in the middle of your mug next. Here comes more of that ink spatter. Love to shear his style in this book. Wolverine takes a step back to arrange his face again. Excuse me, bub. I gotta wee wo my jaw and push my eyeball back in place. The sounds in this panel are so appropriate, they're horrifying. Then we get this grisly panel here that's pretty much what you'd expect for the lead up. Brutal and awesome. Gene butts in and gives the biker a chance to GTFO before it's too late. Yeah, yeah, why don't you talk to the nice lady and let's you and me call the bet off. Better still, l let's just say you won. Gene chides Logan that he must be in a fair amount of pain. Not really, Gene, darling. Not like the hurt inside. Gene begins her barstool psychology session, which we'll see leaves much to be desired. That's a sweet panel of Logan's effed up face. God damn. That's the problem, darling. I just don't know about my pain any longer. Stuff that I thought I had worked out comes right back and the wound gets opened up again. Now I find out that a lot of hurt that I thought I had lived through was lies, implanted in my head just to mess with my memory. What's worse is finding out that most of the joy I was holding on to, like a life raft, was nothing but a fake too. Jean says something playfully ignorant here despite Logan pouring out his heart. Even though she wasn't flippantly rearranging her fellow X-Men's sexuality yet, she was still kind of a bitch back then. After she minimizes his feelings one more time, comparing his loss to grief, he gets a little steamed in this eye-catcher of a panel. Grief? You gotta be kidding, Gene. I've seen the death of every person I ever loved, including you. Wolverine starts talking about the women he's lost, but Gene seems a little put off by something. Oh, it's his eye. That's freaking awesome. Only with Logan could you have a conversation that goes like that. He starts talking about burying Silver Fox, which is where this issue is ultimately headed when we get this panel. Which now that I've read it again, I not only see Clint Eastwood and Snake Plissken details in the face, but also a little Onyx the Fortuitous. Slayer, the bright round. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Tell me whose features you see in this face in the comments. Now that's badass. I'm skipping a page, though I'm not that concerned with getting a strike for reviewing this particular issue, but it's just Wolverine talking about how his healing seems to leave him out of touch with his emotional baggage because his body can't remind him with scars or whatever. Jean Grey offers to go with Logan to bury Silver Fox, which he declines. What do you mean the burial's been cancelled? It seems like there's been a change of plans with Silver Fox's funeral, as Logan Eastwood here snaps at some poor SOB. What's this about the remains being prepared for air freight? Just then, pre-Samuel Jackson Nick Fury and former Weapon X test subject John Wraith touch down and bring Wolvie up to speed. Nicholas, you had better have a good explanation for this. Just following orders, Logan. Never thought I'd see the day when I oversaw a full dress shield funeral for a Hydra big shot. Your pal must have a lot of push at the main office. What pal? Wolverine is understandably upset at this point with the interruption, but quickly chills out after John clues him in that he found a better spot to lay Silver Fox to rest, their long-lost love nest in the woods. Next we get this sweet sweet art of Wolverine in his gear, blindfolded and escorting the casket of his beloved. Just so good. OG John Wraith is laying down the terms and conditions about the site of the cabin being classified, but let's see if it stays that way. Apparently, John's doing this because he owes Logan a huge one. Hope he's talking about a favor and not something else. The group disembark and start looking for the cabin. Navigation satellites accurate to within a few yards, Logan. It's here, all right. It's just overgrown. What's on the other side of these bushes? Stand aside, Wraith. Oh, damn. Logan's gonna go all Weapon X on that shrubbery. Rookie. Wraith leaves Logan to it. Fury unloads the casket and gets told to take a hike by Wolverine. Leave her. Lay her down and clear out of here. I don't want her put in the ground by strangers. We can't just leave you out here in the middle of nowhere. How are you going to get back? You think I get lost in the woods? Just leave me a shovel and get moving. It's real. Whew, them feels, man. And this is more stellar art, but that's an interesting choice for the colorist to make on that one eyelid. Hmm. 
Wolverine is awash in memories of Silver Fox and their time together while he prepares her final resting place. Maybe it's the scent of mountain laurel or the sound of the spade digging rocks. A piece of memory comes rolling over me like sunlight bursting through the clouds. And I really like this rendition in the sky through the flashbacks where Logan seems to come to terms with putting Silver Fox to rest. Some pretty touching stuff here, guys. Clint Wolverine makes one final wardrobe change as he says his goodbye to his passed on sweetheart, promising to return each year. When the wildflowers are blooming and the winds in the laurel. The end. Well kids, what'd you think? This issue is one of my favorites in the series. You could probably tell by the scans that it's been well read over the years. Let me know down in the comments who you think Mark Tashira may have used for inspiration when rendering old Knucklehead. Hope you enjoyed this Wolverine blast from the past, and I'll catch y'all in the next episode. But until then, check out some of my other stuff linked up above. I've been your boy, Richard Rizzo. Peace out.